We got shirts on sale. Express your evolution and starter Pokemon love by buying an evolution family shirt in which one starter shirt? Link will be in the description below. We also got new shirts on sale. Pokemon Sword and Shield are right around the corner. And to kick off the hype, we got Zacian and Zamazenta clashing it out with our Pokemon Clash shirt design. Get them while they're hot. So, uh, yeah. This is a new series to the channel, isn't it? Is it possible to beat the Generation 3 home games with just a love disc? You're probably asking, how in the heck did you put yourself through this Pokemon hell? And I have one answer, entertainment. My job for you guys is for me to entertain. And to watch me suffer must be pretty entertaining, right? Because I did this entire run with love disc over on Twitch. Yep, that's right. This entire run was done live. While I stream on YouTube, um, I don't like keeping all my eggs in one basket, plus YouTube streaming sucks. No offense. Please don't monetize me. Anyways, onto the title at hand. This is a brand new series that came to mind after I was watching Pika Spray's videos on how it is possible to beat Fire Red and Leaf Green with just a slack off. It was a super in-depth and honestly so interesting video that it inspired me to do the challenge that he came up with. Also, go watch Pika Spray's videos. They are A1. I'm not even kidding. But that being said, I wanted to do the challenge in my own style, meaning I wanted to go in blind with no strategy or anything like that. We're going to experience my journey with this challenge, the struggles I had to face, and see the many strategies I came up with that either failed or actually wound up doing well. There will also be a death counter at the end with how many times we have died. There will also be an attempt counter with how many times it took me to beat said gym leader or important battle. In this playthrough, there will not be items used in battle. However, I can use healing items outside of battle as well as held items in battle. It is impossible to do this run without the help of healing items, even if you are level 100. We will be starting off at Little Root Town and going till the very end with Steven. As we go through my journey, I will be taking over my live commentary and explain how I felt at the time and explain the right approach for going through that set circumstance. I also did this challenge on ROM because ROM is the best way to program Love Disc in. On the journey, I will also highlight and explain things to do that I missed when I was in that position originally. Basically think about it like this. I'm going through my journey and pointing out the mistakes I made so you guys don't do the same as me. The entire premise is to show that I was originally one of you guys wondering if it was possible to beat the Generation 3 home games with a Love Disc, which is why I'm assuming you also clicked on this video. Let me tell you, it is possible, but it is painful if you do not take the right approach. You'll be like me and fail several times. This journey of hell took a lot of trial and error, and at some points I wanted to pull my hair out. I did this challenge in Pokemon Sapphire originally because I thought it was the coolest game to do it in, because it was also my favorite out of Pokemon Sapphire and Ruby. Regardless of if I did it in Sapphire though, it can still be done in Ruby. Emerald, however, yeah, it can't be done. You can get all the way to the Elite Four and even all the way to Wallace, even at level 100 with a rash nature, Mystic Water, and Rain Dance, Wallace will eat you alive. Ludicolo spams double team, leech seed, giga drain. I toxic it, and if you get good RNG with double team, you can take it out. But the biggest problem is toxic on his tentacruel. If toxic hits love disc, you're done. Toxic does more damage every turn, meaning even after you did take out tentacruel, you still had Milotic, and that Pokemon is a stalling monster. Plus, he still has four restores left. So I will say you can get up to Wallace with a level 100 love disc, even with the Petra Berry on the toxic though. No, you still can't do it. Alrighty though, I think you guys pretty much know what's going down, so I hope you enjoyed the comedy and you learned some cool stuff. Let's start our journey at Little Root Town. So here we are, in Little Root Town, and me introducing everyone to the series, my Twitch series, has no idea this is happening. So we find ourselves in Little Root Town, where we have the three stars in the back. Love Disc is in place of Trico at the time, because I thought it would be easier to take on May if she chose Torchic instead. The first Love Disc I got was Haste Nature. Don't be like me, and use Hasty. Use one with the proper nature, such as Rash. I don't recommend anything like Modest, because Love Disc will be relying on Tackle and Take Down a good portion of this run. But let me tell you, get a Love Disc with this special attack enhancement. I guarantee it will help you guys so much. That one stat point or that one extra bit of damage that you can take with the special enhanced love disc, it'll help you out. And I mean a lot. So, uh, reset for a rash one or anything like that. When it came to my first battle, though, I mentioned using charm in the beginning because love disc is going to get fried with only having tackle and also has really horrible defenses. So you need to make sure your opponent has its physical attack dropped to a good point. So love disc is not taking as much damage. When I faced May, the first death happened because I forgot the charm. However, shortly after I used charm against her and it wound up working for me. Once May was defeated, I started the real journey and I began battling all the trainers across the route towards Pedalburg. What you should do first is capture Zigzagoon. It's your basic HM Slay Pokemon and it will provide you with aid getting rid of the majority of the obstacles the HMs bring. When going across this Pedalburg route, use Charm on all the Pokemon at least once. Your love disc will thank you as all the Pokemon here are primarily physical attackers. After that route, go through the Wally Junk and proceed over to the next route. From there on to Rustboro City, keep using the Charm technique until you wind up with Water Gun at level 12. Water Gun is going to be your primary move for most of your opponents for a while until Surf, so get you 
used to that. Be cautious of grass trainers on Route 103 below Westboro. I do recommend challenging them. They are beatable with a little effort and you can get some experience along the way. Experience is going to help you out a lot and I'm going to say this a million times in this entire playthrough. I felt a couple times and had to walk all the way back to where they were from Petalburg, but still, it's worth it. While you're on that route, be sure to pick up some cherry berries. They will come in handy a lot later on. On top of those berries, pick up some lump of berries too, after you get cut. Making sure you have plenty of power points will help you out a lot. I didn't pick up lump of berries in my playthrough and I regretted it. Pick up as many as you can because you never know. Once you get to Rustboro, hit up Love Disc and deposit your Zigzagoon in the PC. Remember that this is a Love Disc only run, so no other Pokemon are allowed. After Zigzagoon is deposited, head up to Roxanne's gym and battle the trainers and kick her ass. She's a rock type, so Love Disc literally has no problem with her whatsoever. Once you're done with the Roxanne battle, head over to the PC and pick up Zigzagoon. Then head over to Cutter's house for the Cut it gym. Teach Cut the Zigzagoon and then you're off to Route 116. I actually did Route 116 before Roxanne originally, but it really doesn't matter the order you do it in. If you want extra experience, and that also works. So after you get all that experience, head over to Dufruit Town. Heal up, do whatever you gotta do, and then head over to Granite Cave. On the way to Granite Cave, battle the first two fishermen for experience. Depending on what order you do it in, you can either go through Granite Cave first and then do Brawly, or the opposite, it doesn't matter. Well, we find ourselves to one of the more difficult battles in the game, but definitely not the most difficult. Before you face off against Brawly, taking all the trainers in the gym for extra experience and use Charm on them because it doesn't hurt to be a little safer. I wound up challenging Brawly around six times at around level 19 and found out the hard way that it didn't cut it. Even after using Charm on Machep several times, it got crits on me and it went for Seismic Toss as well, which does damage completely based off of a level. So as a level 19 love disc, I found it was impossible to take on Brawly unless I was a higher level. After those defeats, I wanted to get some more story out of the way by delivering the letter to Steven and heading over to Slateport. I still recommend doing it this way. I defeated all the trainers on Slateport Beach with little to no issues at all, and I took on the Aqua Grunts just fine with a little help of Charm. Quick tip too, they have Carvana. I know water resists, but using Water Gun on these two Grunts is easier because Carvana has rough skin, meaning that when you use tackle on them, it hurts Love Disc. You have two battles back to back, so Love Disc needs to have high health. With all that grinding and story out of the way I took care of, I was at level 23. I was confident that level 23 was a high enough level. Attempt number six, let's get it. And I wind up winding out another time, but this time it was because of unfortunate RNG due to the critical hits from Makuhita. So attempt number seven was definitely the attempt I was hoping I would win, or so I thought. Unfortunate RNG happened and I got to level 24 and learned takedown, so now into more attempts. My strategy of using Charm to lower their attacks was working though, and being at a higher level Level, definitely helped every time I faced off against Brawly, because every time I learned something new. One thing I could have done better is to just use Charm twice, and then because of it dropping the attack by two stages, Brawly would bulk up to only cancel one of the debuffs, meaning Makuhita or Machop were still in the negatives. So you only need to use Charm twice on Machop and Makuhita. Finally, after 10 attempts, I wound up beating Brawly by just using Water Gun. I basically went hyper offense and got kind of lucky. I would still use two Charms though, because you never know. After that run, I already joked about Watson beating up our poor Love Disc into the floor, and uh, you guys will see that momentarily. But but we still got another big battle coming up shortly. So after I defeated Brawly, I headed back to Slateport. While you're in Slateport, pick up Harbor Mail from the Mart for 50 Poke Dollars. I guarantee it will save you so much heartbreak, and I'm not making a pun. Because later in the run, I had to go back for it. And that sucked. After you get that, head up past Slateport and take on the trainers along Route 103. They'll provide extra experience for you against May, which you will need. Trust me. Use takedown against the grass Pokemon on that route. After some leveling, I thought I was finally ready to take on May. But then I forgot something very crucial that bit me in the butt. May had a Shroomish, and I struggled against it. Bad. A very important precaution to take before this battle is to give Love Disc one of your cherry berries we picked up earlier. That comes in handy for Shroomish's effects spore and stun spore. I was taking out her Whelmer with takedown and it was eating up my HP every time I did it. So as you guys can see, these battles were looking very grim. One thing I did learn is that by going for a water gun on Whelmer, you decrease the amount of HP that you actually lose, so that actually winds up helping you out a little bit. Before spamming water gun though, spam two charms in case it goes for rollout because rollout doubles every time, meaning it will take a lot longer for it to hit the higher damaging hits. Personally though, just wait for it to use Splash or Water Gun if you want to take the least amount of damage. The higher HP you have, the easier time you will have against Shroomish. If you take too much HP against Whalmer, just reset. Mega Drain and Leech Seed obliterated me hard. Like, what a combination. After four attempts, I just decided to grind up. It was needed, totally. My chat was already going wahahahaha, hinting at my demise for Watson. I was really feeling the pressure, let me tell you guys that much. So I got to level 28 and was ready to take on May once again. This time I just spam takedown and took down Whale Lord and had a really good RNG. Use takedown in combination with water gun. That was the better strat I learned that way you had higher HP. At this point, once I got the shroomish, I still did not have the cherry berry on love disc. Have that cherry berry on before you go through this hell. It will save your life. You may even be able to take down May at a lower level if you get lucky enough, but still get to around level 28 for the sake of having a bit more power. Around the seventh attempt, I took down the shroomish finally, but effects were activated and I got put to sleep instead, which I actually find hilarious. The chances of you being paralyzed are higher than sleep, so still have that cherry berry on love disc. I would go for a charm 
at least once to lower her attack because at that point Shroomish would have gone for a stun support to paralyze you first more than likely the cherry berry would have activated and that would have had you at a higher HP than my love disc actually was so taking a charm double kick I think you will be fine for the most part that was me though she was difficult but the biggest hell was only just beginning <laughs> What the hell was that? I'm getting flashbacks, guys. Before I took on Watson, I took down the trainers on the right side of Mauville on Route 119. I got a little bit of experience, then I beat Wally, I cycled through the trainers in the gym, and then I attempted my first battle against an level 31. That didn't work. And it continued to not work for around 20 more levels. I got zapped, obliterated, simmered, whatever word you want to say, it happened to me. During the trials of Watson, I was way too stubborn to grind. I wanted to beat Watson with the lowest levels possible. It's okay to have that mentality, but against someone like him, grind up to levels 45 to 50 and make Love Disc learn that Sweet Kiss at level 36. It will help you out a lot, and be sure to also use your Cherry Berry. Don't lose them, they are very scarce resources. Reset in front of Watson so you do not lose it. Even when you get to level 45, still have have that cherry berry because it will save you. During the trials, I also took down the trainers on the left side towards Verdon Turf Town. They are extra experience, and like I always say, extra experience is good. So yeah, pretty much what happened was I got paralyzed, confused, and toasted by Magneton and Magnemite every time up until level 45. Let me explain what I did after all this trial and error. Against Watson's Magnemite, my water gun still did not one hit KO, and that was because I was on a special attacking nature. I guarantee if Love Disc had that special attacking nature, she would have knocked out Magnemite in one hit. To ensure that I would, I would also recommend grinding up to at least level 47 or 48 for that extra power. Next, he brings up Voltorb. My water gun still was not knocking it out even with the 25 level difference. Have the special nature on it, it will help you. I will keep repeating that so you will not forget. If your love disc does happen to be around 45 though, the threat of causing Watson to use many super potions will be effective as well. That means he has less to use on Magneton. After my 50 second attempt, I finally took this dude down. I finally did it. Up to that point in this journey, we had 64 deaths altogether. Watson did that much damage to me. The final strategy I used for Watson was first starting off with Sweet Kiss and hoping it would hit itself in confusion, causing me to have enough HP to one-shot it with Water Gun. It didn't work as planned, but hey, I still took it out. For Voltorb, I just used Water Gun, and he wasted his potions away, which I was okay with, quite frankly. I took it out, he used two super potions, and got a spark off on me. At that point, I was in plenty of range to be able to take at least one shock away from Magneton. Also note that I didn't have the Cherry Berry on it, which if I still did, I would have been in a much better position. If you have yours, you will be in a much better position than I was. Finally, he brought up Magneton, and I was able to take it out of two water guns. Bottom line, the strat you should use is get your love disc up to level 47 or 48. Have a special nature on it like Mild or Rash. It doesn't really matter which one, but honestly, Mild over Rash because Mild lowers the defense, and having the special lowered will kind of put you in a really messed up position. By then, you should be able to one-shot both Magnemite and Voltorb respectively. If you don't, no big deal. He will just potion it, making it easier to deal with Magneton with the reduced potions he has for it already. Also, have the Cherry Berry on Love Disc in case of Paralysis too. Watson loves to go for Thunder Wave, but if you wind up using it too early, then just reset. Having Love Disc paralyze on Magneton will make it harder to take out even if you do outspeed it. One turn of Paralysis can easily be your downfall. Watch for Supersonic too, especially on Magnemite, and if you get hit too many times by Confusion, also reset. Be sure you have enough HP to take at least one Shockwave from Magneton. I would recommend at least being at low green but high yellow. Following these guidelines and using Water Gun will ensure you victory against Watson. Be being level 45 plus is a must for taking out Watson from what I have seen and tried. If you guys can beat him at a lower level, please let me know in the comments below. More than likely for that to happen, you would have to get a lot of good RNG. From here on out though, the run was a little more smooth until we got the Norman. At this point in the Hoenn games, you're around level 45 to 50, which means all the Pokemon you battle here are around level 20. You will one hit KO everything from your journey from Mauville all the way to Lovridge. Go to Flabra Town, Meteor Fall, take an Archie, his team really isn't all that hard because Love Disc is so high leveled, just water gun everything in sight and be wary of your PP consumption. Do not use any of the ethers you find or Lepa Berries you might have picked up in the overworld yet. The Elite Four will provide the use in them, trust me on that. Once you get to Lovridge Town, just go to Flannery's Gym. Go through the puzzle and challenge Flannery. You will have no problem with her because of the type advantage and higher level. Once you're done with Flannery, make your journey over to Petalburg City because it's time for Norman. On the way there, I recommend taking the rest of Tunnel Route, that way you can get strength. Make sure you also have a Chester Berry on hand because that will help out against this Pokemon using Yawn. You can find Chester Berries on Route 104 and Route 116. Before you face off against Norman, just for the sake of having extra experience, I would grind up a bit. I only grinded on a few of Norman's trainers, but do all of them. Getting the extra levels from Norman definitely is not a bad idea. Plus, it's extra money, and having extra money will be super useful a little later on in the run, as you guys will see. Starting off my first attempt against Norman, 
Ruin, I did not have a chest of equipped, and I wound up dying shortly after Vigoroth. Something I did do that was effective until the end, though, was using Charm. Like I said before, Charm will help you out a lot, especially against physical attackers. Charm will help you a lot against Norman. With Slack King having such high attack, you definitely want to do that. Use Charm once or twice on his first Slack King and Vigoroth, then Water Gun away. They do have any attack, but don't worry about that. You'll be fine because they have but for special attack. I got that first part down easily of charming his first two Pokemon. But with this third Slack King, do not Charm, because his Slack King has Focus Punch. Literally just spam Water Gun and you'll be fine. I lost my second time because I did not spam Water Gun, and my third time was because I forgot the Chesterberry. Derp! Chesterberry, guys, remember. So my fourth attempt facing off against Norman, I used the same strategy on Slack King number one in Vigoroth. When it came to the last Slack King, what I found was that attacking with Water Gun after the first Focus Punch fail worked. During Slack King's loafing phase, I went for Charm, just in case it decided to go for Facade. From what I found, he usually goes for Focus Punch first. Regardless, going for Charm first is bad because Focus Punch will more than likely KO you with the HP you will be at from taking all the previous hits from the last two Pokemon. Water Gun first, then Charm after. Use Charm twice and then you're good to go. Once the two Charms are off on it, just spam Water Gun on the regular phase and the loafing phase and you should be able to close out a victory against Norman. After that match with Norman, you're finally able to get Surf. You get Surf from Wally's father from the house next door to Pedalberg's gym. Once you have Surf and have taught love to Surf, head on back to Little Root Town and talk to your mom. She has an awesome item for us. If you talk to your mom, she will have the Amulet Coin, a held item that can double the amount of prize money won in a battle. This will come in a lot of handy with the next move on Love Disc, being Ice Beam. Ice Beam is Love Disc's best friend, as you guys will find out later on in this run. In order to get Ice Beam, you need 4,000 coins from the game corner. In order to get the coin case, head to the lady next door to the Pokemart in Mauville and give her the Harbor Mail we got earlier. In exchange for the Harbor Mail, she'll give you the coin case. I'm telling you this now because I got the coin case in a bit and I had to go back to Slateport and go get the Harbor Mail and blah. That was just a big old mess. So if you didn't have enough money by now, like how I originally did, you can sell all the TMs you have picked up because you will not need them. That's an easy 10,000 Poke Dollars right there. And you need 80,000. In order to buy Ice Beam in these games, you can exchange money for coins and that comes in clutch, especially if you have crap RNG like me. To get me money fast, I battled all the trainers on Route 119 and all the Team Aqua Grunts and Shelly inside the Weather Institute. Even after all that, I didn't have quite enough money yet, so I wound up battling in May without Ice Beam. If you sold your TMs and potential pickup items Zigzagoon gave you, you should have enough before you face off against May. I even had to go to Route 120 for a few more trainers because I didn't think of selling my TMs. Get Ice Beam before May and Fortree and it will make your life easier. I mean, it doesn't get that much easier considering Love Disc is already level 55 at this point, but I mean, still for convenience, just pick up Ice Beam as early as you can. I should also mention on the way to Fortree before you go on Route 119, capture a Wingle. That will be our fly Pokemon. Once you beat Shelly 2, one of the workers from the Weather Institute will give you a cast form. Remove the Mystic Water from it and give it to Love Disc. Keep that Mystic Water attached to Love Disc for the remainder of the game. You will not need any more held items for Love Disc at this point. After I got Ice Beam, I went through Steven's Trial, battled Kecleon, etc. Once I did that task, I went into Winona's gym and had no problem with her gym, her trainers, and her. Ice Beam one hit KO'd everything pretty much. You can take out Pelipper in two hits with Ice Beam. What I find funny is, is that I still have a viewer going, Winona, ha 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 ha. Anytime I see or hear anything in reference to Watson, I'm not even can you guys? I freak out. Skarmory will also go down the surf. It's pretty easy. So after that battle, you wanna know what I did, you guys? I accidentally hit a keyboard key, causing me to go back to my old save state in front of Norman. Don't do that at all. I had to go all the way back to Fortree, get Ice Beam again, and it was a complete mess. Fast forward to after that true gym battle, though, I found my way over to Route 120. I went down that route, battled some trainers. I recommend just battling the good majority because experience. All the Pokemon will go down in one hit pretty much because of Love Disc's high level. Once I got to Lily Cove, I battled against May. I had no problem with her at all. You one hit KO everything. Surf everything and Ice Beam Shroomish and bam, you're good. I then backtracked and went to Mount Pyre, beat the Aqua Grunts there. Archie got the blue orb and then I went to Slate Port, flew back to Lily Cove for the Aqua Hideout. I did the hideout like always, however, I did not get the Master Ball. It's not necessary as you do not need to capture Kyogre. I battled Aqua Admin Matt and had no problem with him at all neither. I just surfed everything and boom, secured victory. You guys will notice that up to this point there hasn't really been any need for critique from my past self, but you will be in for a treat soon enough. After the Lily Cove hideout, I proceeded to Moss Deep City and I battled a few trainers on that route. Battle more than I did. You will need loads of experience for the Elite Four, so prepare now and save yourself a lot of effort. If anything, just battle every single water trainer you can 
all the way down to Pacific Log. A little bit of a money saver too is that you can buy herbs in Loveridge Town. You will save a lot of money rather than trying to spend all your money in forest stores and full hills, hyper potions, etc. Once I got the Moss Deep, I headed straight into Tate and Liza's gym. Before you head into the gym though, capture a tentacle. Don't do what I did. Capture it first because then you might forget. A tentacle will come in handy for waterfall too. Anyways, back to Tate and Liza's gym. I did the puzzle and beat her with these. I just surfed Lunatone, Solrock, and boom, it was pretty easy. Now, something I didn't take into account when I took on Tate and Liza was a second Pokemon next to me. You need two Pokemon to battle them, at least I think so. I'm pretty sure you do though, don't quote me on that. Deposit all the Pokemon to your PC, aside from one. Buy a few Pokeballs. On your second Pokemon's turn, throw a Pokeball. It will waste that Pokemon's turn, that way no status deflecting moves or the small chance of a damage move can be pulled off. Using this mechanic can only make it so that Love Disc can attack. If the second Pokemon gets knocked out, then great, that's fine, that's what you want. After I beat Tate and Liza, I went to Steven's house and picked up a Dive HM. Pick up Tentacle, if you don't have it already, and then what I did after that was I went over to the abandoned ship for Rain Dance. The Rain Dance TM can only be picked up from the abandoned ship a little to the left of Slateport City. You need Dive to go in and get it. I'll leave a video in the description of where to get Rain Dance, it's easy. After I got Rain Dance, I dived in the water right below Moss Deep and found my way over to the Seafloor Cavern. I went through the cavern like always, beating all the Aqua Grunts and a few admins. They were easy. Eventually I found myself against Archie and he was easy as well. Don't set up Rain Dance like I did. You don't need to. Just surf everything and Ice Beam Crobat. Mighty Enemy did you swagger on me and it was a pain, but luckily, if you have good RNG, you can just break through like I did. But even after, I still set up another Rain Dance against Sharpedo. What a dork, man. You don't need to use Rain Dance against him. He's so easy. Just surf everything, literally. That's what I have taught you guys so far, is to just surf everything, and you'll be good for the majority of the time. After the events of the battle, I flew over to Pseudopolis, which I recommend going to first before you head over to the C4 Cavern. It's easier to go there first, in my opinion. That way, all you have to do is just fly once you're done. Or you can wait till after and enjoy the dope music, which is also pretty solid. Up to you, really. Once I was in Pseudopolis, I went into Cave of Origin and faced off against Kyogre. After a few attempts, I wound up beating it, but do yourself a favor and just run away from it if you're just looking to get in and get out. If you want to beat it, just spam Surf and pray you get good RNG. That thing has Hydro Pump and it can do fat damage to you, considering the rain is out, plus it also has Calm Mind. I don't think it's worth fighting a battle you don't have to fight. Once I was done with Kyogre, I headed into Wallace's gym. Before I faced off against him, I defeated all the trainers in the gym for that extra experience. It helps. I hope you guys are ready for Wallace because he is a pain to beat. And wahahaha ha 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 water Pokemon, my chats, they're taunting me, guys. My first attempts against his love disc were treacherous, as he kept going for Sweet Kiss and Water Pulse, which also has a chance to confuse. That confused my love disc, and it kept having bad RNG. I focused way too much on trying to set up Brain Dance. Don't focus on that, just go for Surf until you knock out Love Disc. You do not need to set up Brain Dance if Wallace's Whisk Cash or Seeking have already done so. It saves you a turn of damage, and the fact you save Surf Power Points is also a plus. If Whisk Cash goes for Amnesia afterward, then I think it's set this to the brain dance, but they usually will set it up for you. Keep in mind this fight will involve you getting some good RNG to some degree as well. His Cilio has the opportunity to use Body Slime and that can paralyze you. You can put a Cherry Berry on Love Disc, but the problem with that is that you're sacrificing the power from the Mystic Water. At a point, I was actually doing very well in this battle. Around three attempts, I was on his Milotic already. Unfortunately, it took me out because of Stall and Recover. I went for Freeze Hacks, and even still then that didn't work. I immediately thought and knew I needed the Toxic TM. So I detoured all the way back to the Fiery Path and got Toxic from the strength puzzle. It's easy to find the toxic team in Fiery Path. You don't need a video to find it. It's really, really simple. Once I got toxic, it got personal. And I'm being serious. At this point in time, we have the final move set for Love Disc, being Surf, Rain Dance, Toxic, and Ice Beam. Replace Charm for Toxic. Toxic is going to be great for the remainder of this gym battle sequence and the Elite Four. After around six attempts versus Wallace, I beat him. I used Surf and Rain Dance while watching for potential hacks, such as Paralysis and Confusion. Not to mention, I also grinded up one more level. All those other Pokemon other than Milotic should not give you too many problems as as long as you have Rain Dance up. Be wary of your HP as well. Make sure your HP is at least low grim before facing off against Milotic. Once Milotic comes out, go for Toxic and spam Surf. Milotic will try and use Recover, but because Toxic stacks every time, it doesn't matter. In no time, you should be able to take him down, no problem at all. I did, you can too. Wallace in these games though, is a pushover compared to Wallace in Pokemon Emerald. That guy will kill you. Next up, we finally have the Elite Four, and it's prepping time. Teach Tentacle Waterfall, which in case you didn't know where Waterfall was, it's inside of the Cave of Origin. Before heading over to Ever Grin, make sure you have plenty of PP healing items like max elixirs, lepa berries, etc. I will leave a video link in the description below for where to find some PP healing items. Also, if you have two PP ups, use them on Surf because that will be your main attacking move. I only used one, so you could get away with that, but I would still use two for the sake of it. Your HM slave Zig could have also picked up some PP ups on your journey, so periodically check him out. You can also find one in Victory Road, so that helps too. Finding two PP ups shouldn't be that hard though. Once you have all your stuff prepped up, make your way into Victory Road. I had no problems with the trainers in here, just make sure your power points are high enough. It's okay to use one or two PP healing items in here. That way you don't have to make your way back to the 
the Pokemon Center in Neverland City. I say make sure you have enough because you don't want to wind up like me where I accidentally used the Max Ether in battle. Due to me doing this on accident, I dropped the extra one I had because I felt guilty. Do not use items in battle. After you get through Victory Road, you will then face off against Walla near the end. He's no problem with Surf and Ice Beam. Ice Beam Altaria and Rose Raid and Surf everything else. That's what I did and it worked out fine for me. Now, I finally made it to the Elite Four, and let me just tell you, the TLDR. The Elite Four took so much longer than it should have because I wanted to beat it at the lowest level I could. I was level 69 when I first got in. Yeah, 69, ha ha ha. It wasn't a coincidence, I swear. To be frank, I lost to the Elite Four and Steven 39 times. I went through cycles of grinding from level 69 all the way up to 87 and 88, and then I gained through levels from Battle on the Elite Four. Oh, I should also mention that when I lost to a member, I reset the entire Elite Four run, meaning I started from Sydney. Don't put yourself through that. There is no shame in resetting between members because this run is already super difficult already. I tried out strategies against Sydney where I would set up Rain Dance first, have him potion up at certain times. Against Phoebe, I had the time the Rain Dance properly so her bayonet would go for spite and during my Rain Dance PP. It was a mess, but there was a bigger mess being Glacia. She blocked me off so many times even after I grinded up. To run down Sydney and Phoebe, just grind up to level 88 and you surf on them. They will go down in one shot easy, no problem at all. Ice Beam Sydney's grass types and you're rolling. Glacia though, takes some strategy, and I learned a lot from fighting her so many times as she is the cause of the many deaths I had in this playthrough and in the Elite Four sequence. What worked for me was starting off Surf against her Glalie. That caused her Glalie to drop down to red. She healed up with the full restore, and during the heal phase I used Rain Dance to get my water attacks boosted. Keep in mind this same strat probably won't work for you because your Love Disc should have the special attacking nature on it. You may get the one hit and if you do that's fine. There should still be a time for you to set up Rain Dance if you have to. The problem with trying to set up a Rain Dance every single time though is that all of Glacia's Pokemon have Hail and it just cancels out your Rain Dance. So to set up one with the right timing, only set one up on her last Glalie for her wall rain. That Rain Dance will come in handy getting off a few clean hits of Surf in combination with the Rain Dance. If you have Rain Dance up then great. If not, don't fret as Love Disc being around level 90 at this point in time should be in two hit killing range for all of her Celio. For wall Rain though, to ensure a 2-hit KO, Rain Dance has to be up if you're at level 90. I had good RNG and I got a critical hit against her Wall Rain, but I still think you will be alright if you use Rain Dance. You will eventually KO her Wall Rain, especially if you have a good chunk of your HP and have avoided all the Body Slime Paralysis hacks from Resilio and as long as Light Screen didn't get set up on her second Glalie. Those conditions have to be met. Non-Paralysis and no Light Screen to make your time the easiest. Light Screen isn't the biggest still though, although I should say if Glalie does get a special defense drop on you from Crunch, reset. That will ruin all your momentum. If you follow those conditions and are at least level 88 to level 90, you should eventually be able to beat Glacia. She is tough, but not Watson tough. Once you get the Drake, just Ice Beam everything. He's a chump. Moving on to the champion, Steven, it took me a few attempts to beat him, but you should be fine as long as you're early 90s. Steven took me a few attempts, but not a lot. The good portion of the time of why I reset was because his Skarmory went for Toxic. Love Disc cannot be Toxic if you want to beat Steven. Toxic has to be avoided at all costs. Eventually, I took out Skarmory after setting up one Rain Dance. If Skarmory uses any other move other than Toxic, your Rain Dance should be set up and ready to go. Once Skarmory is taken out, I took out his Aggron, and that was no problem because of its Rock Typing. Cradilly was where I ran into another problem though. The first few times I took on Steven, he took me out with Giga Drain and Confuse Ray, and then I had really bad RNG with the Confusion Hacks. I just reset until I took it out and didn't get hit with the Confusion Hacks. That was the simplest way for me to beat him. With the Special Nature Love Disc, I'm not sure if that would be able to take out Cradilly, but if it does, hoorah. You don't have to battle RNG hell. Against this Claydol, go for Rain Dance against it first. If it doesn't go for Light Screen, then you're safe to knock it out. If it does go for Light Screen, use Toxic on it to stall it out for a bit. Claydol will hit you with a few Earth Quakes, but those shouldn't be too devastating. Once Toxic is up, go for another Rain Dance and attempt to try and KO it. The point of Toxic is to stall out a turn for Light Screen. You do not want Light Screen up against his Metagross. If he uses a full Restore on his Claydol, then that's great. Now you have a turn to set up Rain Dance and an extra turn for Light Screen stall. If Rain Dance is not up though, Surf should still be able to KO Metagross, as we're that powerful. Make sure that your HP is at least around halfway though, because if not, a Hyper Beam will take you out. I had around 5 HP left, and I got 2 Surfs on it because of the Hyper Beam Recharge. After Metagross, all that's left is Armal though, and that's an easy one hit KO with or without rain. So as you guys can see, we did it. We beat Pokemon Sapphire with just a Love Disc, and it also is possible with Pokemon Ruby. When I did this blind, I never thought I was going to be able to do it, and people thought I was a nut job for doing it, but here we are now. If you guys did enjoy seeing a video like this, please let me know in the comments below. Also, if you guys have any criticism for how the video is done, please also let me know in the comments below. This is the first time I have ever done a video like this, and I hope I did a good job on it. One more time, big shout out to Pika Spray and this amazing challenge idea. This project was so much fun to work on, and I wanted to shout him out 
once again and his content. If you guys are not sub to Pika Spray, totally go do it and check out his content. This challenge was made up by him, so go give him the recognition he deserves. If you guys also want to catch these challenges live, go check me out on Twitch. That's where I do all the footage for this and have the crazy chat interactions. If you ever see something solo run in your sub feed, that means we're live with it. If you guys like these challenges though, I will definitely do more of them. But as for right now, we will see. Also, one more thing. I couldn't do Pokemon Emerald, but for anyone out there who wants to do this challenge, and this includes you too, Pika Spray, if you're watching this video, I challenge you and others to do this. Get past Wallace. Let's see what you got. Also, if you have any other challenges you want to see me do, comment them below and follow my Twitch where I do these live. You'll be able to see me fail at first hand. I really do hope you guys enjoy these types of videos as it took a lot of work and effort to put together. If you enjoyed the video, why not leave a like and subscribe to my channel with notifications on, that way you never miss an upload. If you want to support me further, consider following my Twitch where I stream a lot of Pokemon content and Nintendo content like Shiny Hunting, Showdown Battles, Explorers of Sky, Zelda, Fire Emblem, Smash Brothers, Borderlands, you name it, I play it. Want to support me further further in game call perks? Check out my Patreon. Dan Leone, Lady Crimson, Pal491, The Lazy Leo, Matthew Young, Awesome Lego, Jarrett Wizosted, and Sodden Grider did, and I want to thank them personally for going above and beyond. It means the world to me. I think I'm gonna wrap this up though. I'm Mr. Gumbrian, and I will see you in the future for more awesome Pokemon content.